So my speech today is how you can change the world using your imagination, bravery, and stamina. So I'm going to start with imagination. When I was little, me, my mom, my dad, and a couple of couch surfing uncles lived in a one bedroom apartment here in Los Angeles, right across the street from the gang infested projects. As a matter of fact, I remember walking out of our apartment and seeing fresh blood on the sidewalk from a recent fight. So it's no surprise that my mom, in order to keep us safe, kept us locked practically in that apartment. We had a play in there and we had to use our imagination. My mom was a seamstress. So she gathered enough money to send me and my sister to a better school, the local Catholic school. So I used my imagination to pretend that the church with its high ceilings and its stained glass windows and its grandiose appearance, I used my imagination to pretend that that was my house because I aspired for that. I wanted a big house, not a tiny cramped apartment. So just like that, using my imagination, I was able to experience a bigger, better reality for myself. And if you think about it, our parents and grandparents have a big imagination because they've imagined a bigger, better reality for us, their future children, and for themselves. So back to imagination. Little by little, unfortunately, my imagination, that wild, vibrant, free imagination, started to close and close and close. It started to close because I put it in a box a box that society puts us in. A box that tells you, you're not smart enough. You don't come from the right family. You're not witty enough. You're not cool enough. You're not the right race. You're not the right gender. In that box, my imagination was suffocating. I couldn't imagine beyond that box. Because in order to have a vibrant, imagination, you have to think outside of that box. But something happened on June 16th, 2015, that cracked my imagination wide open after it was shut. What happened was a man formally announced his effort to win the GOP presidential nomination and spewed words of hate towards my community. My imagination cracked open because I was watching him spew those words of hate in front of my children who are Latino, who are Mexican. I decided that I needed to revert back to that child that had unlimited possibilities and a wide imagination to see how I could create a bigger, better reality for my children. Just like that little girl imagined a bigger, better reality than what she had in that little tiny apartment. Because when he said, when Mexico send it, sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're sending gang members, criminals, rapists, and when I heard that my children were hearing those words of hate, I knew that other Latinos were also hearing those words. Words of hate are like a virus, an airborne virus that's invisible, and we don't know where they're gonna land, how they're gonna affect us. And some of them, some of those words are deadly because they kill our imagination. So, I decided to fight words of hate with words of hope. And that is when the seed for my company, Con Todo Press, was planted. My company, Con Todo Press, produces books that show the amazing things our community does. We are astronauts, Supreme Court justices, activists, icons, artists. We're not rapists. 
We're not criminals. And this is the result of what my imagination produced to fight those words of hate. In this book, I profile 11 bold, brave Latinas. Dolores Huerta, activist. Elena Ochoa, the first Latina to go to space. She's an engineer. She's also a, fl a classical flautist, by the way. <laughs> I profile many women that have done incredible things. Rita Moreno, who won an Oscar, who won a Grammy, an Emmy, a Tony, a Peabody. This is what our children need to see. Not those words of hate. That's not what they should be listening to or seeing because their imagination is going to close and there's no possibility when your imagination has no, has no pulse. So that leads me to my second element of success, bravery like these women. You don't just need imagination, you need the bravery to put your imagination into action. I'm going to give you three examples. Walt Disney came to Los Angeles from Kansas City with $40 in his pocket. He had no connections to the industry. Steve Jobs created and revolutionized the tech industry with his imagination and something he put into action in his garage. Oprah Winfrey changed the media landscape using her imagination after her producer in, on television told her that she did not have what it took to be, to be in media, to be a reporter, and look at them now. They only, they not just had the imagination, but they had the bravery to put their imagination into action. But I want to tell you guys, we don't need to go that far to see examples of imagination and bravery. We see them every day in our homes, in our backyards, on the corners. Our parents, our grandparents, they had the wild imagination to come to this country because they saw a better future, but they had the bravery to leave behind comfort of culture, comfort of famili familiarity. They had the bravery to know that they might face so many challenges, and they came because they were brave. And if you want to go back even further, let's look at the Mayans and Aztecs. Look at their imagination. They created pyramids with using practically no tools and no technology, pyramids that still stand today. So it's in our DNA. Imagination and bravery is in our DNA. <laughs> so when I opened my company, Contodo Press, I was scared, but me wanting to combat those words of hate were a lot stronger than my fear. And I want to let you guys know that bravery is not a superpower. Bravery is being human, feeling the fear, and doing it anyway. So I want to tell you guys, and I want to put this out there. If there's a job that you want to apply for and you don't think you're going to get it, apply anyway. If there's a mentor that you want to seek advice for, and you don't think they're going to respond to you, ask them anyway. That's bravery. If you don't think you have what it takes to start your company, to follow your dream, to produce that new product, do it anyway, because that's what I did. So that leads me to my last element of success, which is stamina. Stamina is knowing that your journey is going to be difficult, there's going to be challenges, but you're going to have to keep going. Walt Disney was rejected over 300 times to get a financial loan to open Walt Disney World. Over 300 times they said no. But finally, on the 314th time, one bank said yes. He kept going. He had the stamina. Steve Jobs was fired from the company he created. But he kept focus. Eventually, they hired him back. <laughs> he had stamina. Oprah Winfrey has had many failures. Her company was almost on the brink of bankruptcy, but she kept going, and now she's producing shows that are winning awards left and right. 
because she has stamina. You see, I think the best asset for success is not connections, not intelligence, not money, it's stamina. And us Latinos, we have an edge because all of those elements, imagination, bravery, and stamina, it is in our cells, it's in our DNA, and it's a legacy that our ancestors have given us, and we owe it to ourselves and to them and to future generations to keep pulling forward for those that are gonna come next. So I urge you to open your imagination, act on it with bravery, and stick with it with stamina. My company, Contodo Press, may not have as wide or as loud of a megaphone that Donald Trump has, but I'm starting from somewhere, and I'm hoping that my words of hope reach and provide some kind of a antidote to those words of hate. Because as Mother Teresa said, we alone cannot change the world, but we can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. And you never know, maybe my microphone, maybe one day will be as loud as Donald Trump's. <laughs> So I'm going to end my speech with the last paragraph of my next book called Fearless Trailblazers, 11 Latinos Who Made U.S. History, which releases on Cesar Chavez Day, and he's one of the men featured in my book. It says, now look into the mirror what's reflecting back your way. Perhaps Julian, Lin Manuel, Carlos or Jose? The answer is you, C kind, compassionate, and smart, deserving, loving, and complete. You have a real big heart. So go out and be fearless. Show your talents. Don't be shy. The world deserves your gifts. There's a million reasons why. Like all these fearless trailblazers who are now known far and wide, you have unlimited potential. Let your passion be your guide. Thank you so much. Thank you.